Tonight, from Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. see Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals taking on Gardner Minshew and the Jacksonville Jaguars. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. The enthusiasm of this Cincinnati crowd in full effect a moment ago as their Bengals took the field to the delight of this sold-out crowd. And they're all set as they'll match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh Lambeau now ready to put this one in the air. And we are underway from Cincinnati. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Bengals offense here ready to rock and roll. Joe Burrow is the man at quarterback. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. First carry here for Joe Mixon. Powerful running. Fights off another. I think the second tackler would have learned from the first. And he's got a Bengals first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On the run, it's Mixon. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Escaping the pressure right. Burrow on his toes that time as they get the first down. That's good for a Cincinnati. With Charles in the past, a lot of people called this offense one-dimensional. I think you did. Well, I think it was you. I'll be honest, I did. <laughs> I think the fan base is hoping with this young rookie that they can put some wrinkles in this offense like we just saw. I think you're exactly right because we did have that discussion that what we've seen in the past from them, they needed to broaden, and they have done it here. Look at what he's bringing to their offense, and now as a defensive coordinator, you've got some extra work to do to prepare for him and their offense. 12 more yards there and another first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, with that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebacker. Backers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. 
Back to Mixon on first down. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. The ball carrier. It was Taven Bryan who got him down defensively. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to pose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Second down, here's Mixon. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two, now third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. 47 from Mike, boy, 47. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. It's a gain of 13, and the Bengals have a first down. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone, because the closer you get to the end zone, the field gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. And he stopped immediately there. The wide receiver. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. down right Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Second down, here's Burrow. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Finding his way home for the sack that time, Taven Bryant. But no takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Certainly not what they wanted defensively. We're hoping to hold them to a field goal. Instead, they're able to convert the third and long here on the opening drive. So not only was it a flipping field position and a flipping fortunes, but how about mentally? You just described it. They were hoping to force them into a field goal there. Instead, they give up the big game, and now it's first and goal. The offense has got them on their heels. No score after one on EA Sports. No score. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. Here's a run with Mixon, and he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. This defense is really flowing around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. 
Burrow looking to pass. Green's open, and he's got it for a Bengal touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab, and the Bengals take it right down and score on the opening drive. Walking into the stadium, we saw a ton of people donning the jerseys of this rookie quarterback, so you know they love that opening drive, and he throws a touchdown pass. He gave a little bit of confirmation about what they had hoped, right? Because they thought they had a quarterback. They're thinking they have a quarterback. You do this, they believe they've got a quarterback. Look up elbowing each other up in the stands. That's our guy. Off for the point after is Randy Bullock. He's got it to make it 7 0 Bengals. That one in the books as a 12 play drive. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Just outside the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Jaguars ready to go offensively for the first time with Gardner Minshew, former six-round pick at QB. And I'll bet he's talking to his guys about resisting the temptation to try and turn this into an up-and-down game, almost like basketball, where both teams press and one team gets an advantage. Our team's trying to run with them, and they're just not equipped for it. Doesn't matter whether you're equipped or not. Just settle in. Get calm before you go for the big strikes. Minshew going to lead up the Jaguars first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. Offense. Oh, man, come on. Don't do it like that. So he was holding from that left tackle position. Everyone tries to keep their hands inside when they're blocking ever since they liberalized the rules where you can extend them out. But sometimes they get out a little wide and they get detected grabbing some cloth. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And this one into the hands of DJ Shark. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Four yards remain for second down. Out of the gun is Minshew. And his throw here is incomplete. DJ Chark, the intended target, and it's third and four. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Minshew sets to throw. And finding Keelan Cole. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. First target, first catch, and a first down. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. 
Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Now after that last play, there's a Bengal down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 46. Shotgun handoff to Thompson. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front. Because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Minshew on target there to Conley. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 22-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll run on first down. It's Thompson. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. up at halftime in a little less than two minutes. We'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the seven. The six yards on the pickup and it leaves him with a first and goal. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That and he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying this one up. Certainly there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast, but a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time Josh in order Lambeau to stop those guys? Josh Lambeau now for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. 
And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. First and 10 at their own 23. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything's working pretty well for the defense. Yeah, what's going on on the defensive That's side? That's a tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. They will throw on first down with Burrow. Able to find Higgins. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there, first down. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And Burrow going to throw again. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So line of scrimmage, still the 39 on second and 10. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield equally good so back-to-back -back incompletions and that has him staring at a third and ten and the catch made it's Tyler Boyd the Jaguars is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half It's a 47-yard field goal try from here, but instead they're going to opt to go for it on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Burrow. Complete to his tight end sample. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. First down. Green with a catch left side. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Ten yards there and a Bengal first. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Perfect. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. 
First down now, but that clock rolling. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. It's C.J. Henderson picking it off. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. At their own six-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And you got to think, if this is anything other than just taking a knee, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, they've got enough to talk about at the half. Why do anything else? Let's get out of there. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports halftime report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, we'll get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Second half, one touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The 20-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. First play of the drive is a run with Thompson. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to help feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Looking to throw it, Minshew. He'll fight his man, LaVisca Chenault. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. First down, it's Robinson. 
He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Logan Wilson. It's Logan Wilson there to bring him down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Robinson. And he is going to be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bengals' 40-yard line. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. And inches. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. They'll run it now with Robinson. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. The ball carrier. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run here with Robinson. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. On second down now, it's Robinson. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. Able to complete this to Chenault. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defensive side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. From 19 yards away. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Lambo on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. Josh Lambeau. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. 
Well, they find themselves trailing on the scoreboard, but it certainly hasn't been because of what they've been able to do at the receiver position. And let's face it, partner, we've been around a lot of receivers. Has it ever been their fault when things aren't going well? We <laughs> know point. how they operate, right? And right now what they're saying is, well, guess what? If we want to win, throw it to us even more. We're the ones making the plays. The Bengals drive about to get going. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Threw the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drive. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. K. Levon chase on. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. A draw play for Mixon. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Ball carrier. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. on third down they've been okay two for three thus far this is going to be third and 13 now it's burrow and he's got his man out of the backfield that's complete and able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds three yards all they could muster there and it'll bring up fourth down he got out of bounds that's a good thing but still short of the first and now since this brings up fourth down the defensive play call grab your nerves because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily Fair catch called for in May, but now we'll have to see about the penalty. Running into the kicker. Defense. Oh, what happened though? Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Here's Kevin Huber now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Minshew, first and ten. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A gain of six there on first. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. And they've got to go thank the guys on D. 
Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Minshew on target here to Chark. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. A nice burst there as they'll get about seven that time on the first down run. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. They go with Thompson again. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Burrow call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Third. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now. Just stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. Nine yards. First down, Jaguars. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. This is Thompson, and this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Thompson and he'll get it here to the 10 yard line four yards on the pickup there and now they're left with a third and eight you can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness that time the offense winning the aggression battle and the defense was obviously aiming for the football maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself and that's why he was able to break through and get the game that he did Minshew throwing on third down 
And that one drops incomplete as he got popped as he was throwing it. Oh, that's got to frustrate him a little bit because they nearly got to him there, and it would have been the first sack of the game. Instead, they're able to influence the release, and they did force the incomplete pass. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. A 27-yard attempt. And Lambeau will put this one through. And they will move up by 10 now. 17 to 7. 17. Bengals 7. So barring something extraordinary here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Yeah, we've got to find two scores. So, you know, we're not going to exactly move it over there yet. It can be done, but boy, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch for them, isn't it? Yeah, they would have to move incredibly quick and have some luck, too. Field goal back out. Lambeau to kick this one off. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So Burrow and the Bengals down by 10. A little over 50 seconds remaining. Their offense has struggled all night and now they need to find two scores late to try to pull this thing out. at this late stage of the game, but they avoid disaster. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Throwing now is Joe Burrow. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. Both players had a shot at that one. Neither can get it. And it brings up fourth down. It's fourth down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now it's Burrow. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Jags take over in terrific field position. Minshew down to a knee, victory formation, and that should be just about it. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half, and no points were allowed. That's a great way to close them out.
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Cincinnati, good night, everybody.